Hey, what is up, guys? Blunt Guts here. This is a Watch Over Realms video. Thanks so much for tuning into my channel. I really appreciate it. We have got a hell of a summoning weekend coming up right now. Hell of a summoning weekend. We got new heroes. We got Twyla coming. We've got an ancient banner that is awful. We've got a rehash of last year's event. <laughs> I feel like Twyla deserves her own event. I think she deserved a, a, just a rebranding of Shadow in the Castle, but I guess that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, I think last year it was, shoot, what is her name? Um, Northerner chick that nobody uses. Swords, likes attack speed. I can't remember what her name is. Falcia, Falcia. She's awful. Oh, well, she's not awful, but she, but she's not good. And and you know, not really as far as an exclusive is concerned. Exclusives have just gotten exponentially better over time. The heroes that are on the banner this this time around are just phenomenal, and uh, you definitely want to be pulling for them, in my opinion. Hex is incredible. Uh, Twyla is quite good as well, although, uh, in my opinion, Hex is going to be the best one available this weekend. So I'm going to talk you through this real quick. Let's talk about Hex. I'm not going to go through his skills. Y'all know what he does. He pulls cards. He does massive damage, more single target damage than pretty much any hero in the game when you do get him enough awakenings. But these awakenings are where it's at. And since I think many of you likely already have a base copy of him, at least let's talk through the awakenings real quick. A1 during the effect of Mad Truth, there is a chance to draw the Fool, which is the best card that he can throw out there. Deals 500% damage three times and inflicts a 75% slow and burning for five seconds. Massive, massive damage. I have seen this crit for uh, upwards of, of like 2 million, 3 million on the uh, Guild Boss 1. And even in like Void Rift content where you're, you've are you got relatively high magic resist, uh, you're talking about seven, 800k damage, stuff like that. It is just nutty what this guy can do, especially when he's paired with Aracha or with Twin Fiend. Uh, if he's got a Lord to really help him out, oh, X, I love you, baby. Uh, number two, attack plus 300. This is especially effective for Marksman because among the damage dealing classes as far as like mages marksmen fighters marksmen have the lowest base attack on average hex is no exception to that he's got i think about 3700 at a zero and a one when you get into a two he's up around 4k makes a big difference that's a much larger percentage increase relative to his base attack so this is actually more important for him than it is for some of those other classes that i did mention uh, the a3 this is where it's at this is where this is the sweet spot in my opinion if you don't have May 3, you got to be pulling on this banner. During the effect of Mad Truth, performing basic attack against targets inflicted with burning extends the duration of Mad Truth by one second, up to a maximum increase of 30 seconds. So it's already a 35 second ultimate. It is going to go up to potentially one minute and five seconds with this increase. That is ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous. Like, oh my God, Hex, uh, love you, baby. Uh, so goddamn good. Yeah, it's just, it's just so goddamn good. I, I just, I, I love, I love this hero. He's, he's probably my favorite hero in the game. Um, I've said that before. I'll say it again. <laughs> he just it does so much damage. He's enabled a lot of crazy things for me in this game. So really love Hex. Uh, and uh, this is, this is where it's at because uh, you, you basically can have like 60, 70, hell, even 80% with proper rage regen uptime on his ultimate with this, especially in long-term fights. It is phenomenal. Uh, the A4, 5% penetration. Everybody else gets eight, but it would be overpowered on him because he's already too goddamn good, but still a solid A4. Anytime you can get uh, armor ignore or magic resist ignore in this case on the A4, that is really awesome. And then finally, A5, each draw returns one card of fate and increases each damage dealt by the Fool and the Joker by 30%. So you're going to get a 90% increase to the Joker and the Fool because they each hit three times. So it is a significant increase there. Uh, you're also going to get uh, basically quicker accruing of the cards of fate it's a5 is really good too i'm not going to say it's not it's not a3 but a5 is really good i think for general use a3 is solid uh, a a5 is is just uh it's a whole other level and it's great too so you know I, I think honestly i would be pulling on this banner because twilight is great if you don't have hex a5 he's phenomenal uh i i think it's worth getting even if you have an a3 already still worth pulling on this banner uh i'm not even going to talk about the epics Aside from the fact that Deimos is great, Navra sucks, Cyrene is an MVP, but we all probably have all of these except for Deimos. And if you don't have Navra at A5, definitely don't use Epic Soul Stones on him, but you can certainly fuse him over and over again if you want to. Guys, before I talk about Twyla, 
I gotta say, one, I think she's worth getting. Two, if you are going to be buying summons in order to get her, definitely buy your W Gold on Smile One. Smile One is the official third party payment platform for Watcher of Realms. Every time you buy on Smile One, you're gonna get at least a 10% discount on your W Gold purchase. Don't spend any more than you have to on this game, would be my advice, much to the chagrin of Moonton, I'm sure. <laughs> But save money where you can. If you are going to spend, spend wisely, in my opinion. On top of that, for a limited time, there's a single top-up rebate event going from October 31st all the way to November 10th. You can use my exclusive link in the description of this video. Uh, I don't get a kickback or anything like that, but it does help me. It does get me more of these promotions. Uh, so I, I would certainly appreciate it if you did use my link. If you are going to be purchasing, you can check out the rewards. They are to the right of me on the screen right now. Depending on how much you buy, you're going to get some free rewards Let's along. Let's talk about Twyla here. Uh, really solid hero. Uh, I, I think she's going to be great. Her biggest problem, she's yet another Nightmare Fighter with a one one tile range. And that is just not great. Not great at all. I, I don't understand why this... Uh, you know, I was talking about creativity here. Can we diversify a little bit, folks? Like, come fuck on. I just, I just don't get it. Why do we need another Nightmare Fighter? Now, she does crazy damage. I, I, there is uh, going to be a damage comparison video that I'm going to be putting out where I compare her damage to the other Nightmare Fighters, you know, Lust, Arrogance, uh, Kagiri, the new one. Um, but bottom line, there's not she does great damage, but there, there are lots of other Nightmare Fighters that already do that. And I, I, just, I just don't know. I don't know that it's needed at the end of the day. Uh, but she is really cool. She's got great armor ignore. Uh, I think there's only one fight in the game that really takes advantage of it fully because you do need to uh, basically get her all the way. Uh, it's what? I think you need to do 10. No, eight, excuse me, eight ultimates before you get the maximum of 80% uh, defense penetration. So there's really only one fight in the game where you're going to get full benefit out of that, and that's Guild Boss 2. We've got a bunch of other Nightmare Fighters that are doing great damage in Guild Boss 2 already. So I, I just don't know that she's needed is my big problem with her. As a hero, she is great. Got this cool talent, this deranged blade. Deals 20% damage 12 times consecutively and inflicts bleed for 5 seconds. So she brings bleed. She's going to do a bunch of multi-hits. So that's going to be helpful for like Sticks Codex and things like that. But not necessary. Kind of an unneeded hero, unfortunately. And, and as much as I like her, uh, I, I think if you already have Hex A5, I don't know that you really need to go for her. I'm kind of leaning that way myself, unfortunately. And I, it sucks because I was real excited to pull for her. I think I'm probably going to try to get one copy, and then I'm just going to... But we can look at her Awakenings real quick. Uh, A1, after triggering the ultimate four times, it increases every single instance of Deranged Blaze damage to 30%. So that's going to be basically a 50% damage increase after you've triggered the ultimate four times. Again, you need to trigger this so many times in order to get the benefit. It's eh. 300 attack, like I was saying with Hex, this is great, but because she has higher base attack, this is a smaller relative increase to her damage, so not as impactful as the A2 on Hex. Ultimate duration plus five seconds, that's great. I mean, I don't want to compare them to Hex's Awakenings, which are the greatest in the game, but uh, it's, it's not crazy. It goes from what? 20 seconds to 25 seconds, so solid, but not 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 ridiculous. It is going to be a what 25% or excuse, yeah, 25% increase to her her ultimate duration, which is nice. Uh, and then the A4, 8% penetration. Like I said, she's not as overpowered as Sex, so she gets 3% more penetration, which is still solid. And then finally, upon taking fatal damage for the first time, becomes immune to death for six seconds and increases damage by 100 percent That's nice. Uh, I, if she had two tile range, I would be all about her. I would be all over this because she would solve a lot of issues for, for you know, uh, fighters, but not uh, not crazy otherwise, um, but a good hero. And, and, you know, if you don't if you don't have Arrogance and Kagiri and Lust, uh, but you should because two of those heroes were available on guaranteed summons and uh, Arrogance has been in the game for over a year at this point. Um, if you need yet another Nightmare Fighter, she's your girl. Uh, she is really, really good, uh, but I just don't know that she's needed on most accounts. As far as this Special Ancient Summoning here, Morgan, eh, pretty good in Guild Wars recently. I've seen a lot of Morgan comps for sure. Uh, I don't have her personally, but I, I, I wouldn't mind getting her. I would never specifically pull for her, though. Just like all of the other Legendary Lords that are available from regular summons, I just don't think it's worthwhile trying to pull for her on a banner. I think Alistair is really good. 
but also kind of un unnecessary unless you you really need him for um, a specific piece of content. Uh, I, I don't think that I would be pulling on this banner. Uh, even then, I still probably wouldn't be pulling on this banner. He's somebody that I would just be happy that I got when he pops out on somebody else's banner. You know, uh, he's, he's definitely a great hero. I, I wouldn't mind grabbing him, but I wouldn't want to risk popping my Lord Mercy on a Morgan. So maybe if it, you just pulled a Lord or something like that, you're not really risking all that much by doing it. But I, I just Ancients are so important at this point in the game that I just wouldn't pull on a banner like this. Personally, uh, that's just my perspective, but... In any case, guys, those are the events. Oh, I didn't talk about the two times. I didn't talk about the... Yeah, every weekend, every weekend. So do what you want with that. <laughs> I appreciate you all tuning in. Please do like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. I will catch you all next time.